On July 7, 2003, at 11.18 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, NASA launched the Mars Exploration Rover B, also known as Opportunity, on a Delta II 7925H rocket. Its goal was to land at Terra Meridiani on Mars and spend 90 days exploring the Martian terrain using a panoramic camera, microscopic imager, thermal emission spectrometer, moss bower spectrometer, alpha particle X-ray spectrometer, rock abrasion tool, magnet arrays, hazard avoidance cameras, and navigation cameras. Instead, it has spent more than 4,000 days so far on the job, outlasting its partner, the Mars Exploration Rover A, also known as Spirit. Opportunity has a 20 megahertz CPU, 128 megabytes of RAM, 256 megabytes of flash memory. There's recently been an issue with its flash memory, so it's currently in RAM only mode. It's powered by solar arrays during the day, lithium ion batteries at night, and it's heated by a tiny radioisotope heater with a few grams of plutonium, keeping itself warm in the otherwise very cold Martian landscape. There's a lot of good video for Opportunity, so let's get on with the launch and the original launch audio. 20 seconds. Green board here in the Mission Director Center. Topping underway. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Main engine start, zero, and liftoff of the Delta rocket with opportunity. A chance to explore and unlock the secrets of our neighboring planet. The transient set lift off. Engine position looks good. Recovering nicely from the liftoff transients, and the solid rocket motors are increasing their thrust during their 75 second burn. Main engine chamber pressure is holding steady, and the vernier engines are continuing to burn well. And we're now past the Mark 1. The vehicle is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. So we now are entering the max Q portion of our flight where the vehicle encounters the greatest aerodynamic forces. Jupiter Inlet Station now has signal. Main engine continues to burn well. Solids are tapering off their thrust. Approximately 20 more seconds left of uh, the burning of the first uh, ground lid solid rocket motors. Engine positions continue to look nominal. Vehicles tracking right down the center of the range tracking. Here we have burnouts of the solid rocket motors on the air on the ground lid, and we have air starts of all three solid rocket motors and separation of the six ground lid solid rockets. This is the voice of Ted Jones in the telemetry lab. Engine, main engine continues to burn well. Vernier engines continue to burn. And the three airlit solids are continuing to burn symmetrically with equal amounts of thrust. T plus 116 seconds. Plus 130 seconds, altitude is 25 miles, downrange distance 65 miles, and our velocity is 5,200 miles per hour. Two minutes, 10 seconds into the mission. The LOX tank press event, and we do see a slow rise in the liquid oxygen tank pressure, as expected. Light controls are really smooth now as we move in the upper atmosphere. The engine continues to burn smoothly, constant chamber pressure. The airlit solids have uh, burned out and separated. We have separation of the airlit solids. We see just a little bit of disturbance during that separation, but uh, nothing much to report there. It's very smooth. Vehicles recovered nicely as we continue to burn. Plus three minutes. We're getting good, nice, uh, clean video from the uh, video camera from the uh, rocket. And right now our altitude is uh, 43 miles, downrange distance 170 miles, and our velocity is now over 8,600 miles per hour.
three minutes, 20 seconds into the mission. Thing continuing to go well. We're expecting um, our Miko enable in approximately 10 seconds. Is the main engine cut off for the first stage? After which it will fall away. The float switches, and we've enabled Miko, main engine cut off, and we're standing by for main engine cut off, and we have main engine cut off. Verniers continue to burn. Verniers have cut off. And we have stage one two separation. Standing by for stage two ignition. And we see stage two ignition. So here again we have that stalwart of the exploration missions, the Delta II, and the boosters were the Gem 48 boosters, nine of them, six burning at the start, uh, those had 628 kilonewtons of thrust apiece and they lasted for 75 seconds. The main engine on the rocket was the RS-27A, it lit on the ground and lasted for 265 seconds, it had a thrust of 1054 kilonewtons. Here you see the AJ-10 of course. Uh, 43.6 kilonewtons on this stage, burning aerosene in N204 for a total of 7 minutes and 11 seconds. Finally, the third stage is the Star 63, which has a little bit more than 100 kilonewtons of thrust, burning for about 2 minutes. I should note that to actually place my payload upside down on the top of the third stage in order to have it attached properly in the simulator. Anyway, uh, continuing with the original commentary. That picture is looking up toward the Murby spacecraft, the third stage. And there's Seco 2, second stage engine cutoff. The hydraulic system is powered off. We have normal bleed down. The actual mass of the Opportunity rover was 185 kilograms, and the total mass being sent to Mars was about a ton. Unfortunately, my payload here is over mass and I wasn't able to get it within the limit. So this is not going to be heading over to Mars, but fortunately we have a lot of video from NASA to make up for that, and we'll be watching that along the rest of the way. But uh, we will attempt to fire the third stage engine shortly, uh, but there is one thing that NASA does that I have not figured out how to do properly. And we have spin up of the third stage, and We have separation of the third stage from the second stage. Now for newer versions of Kerbal Space Program, I'm running an old version here. Uh, there is a persistent rotation mod that will allow for spin stabilization, but here I do not have that, and so that's why this is not spin stabilized, much to, to my detriment because, in fact, uh, even though this was probably overweight to get to Mars in the first place, I lost communication shortly after lighting the SRB and so lost control. We actually have brief coverage of the third stage ignition, so here it is. We have third stage ignition. Third stage is burning well, we've got good data. It's tough to get to Mars, and in Opportunity's case, it took seven months. Uh, Opportunity reached Mars on January 25, 2004, and here is a NASA animation of the event, of its arrival. And during the animation, I'll also run video of the actual events occurring in Mission Control while this was going on, uh, juxtaposed with the events on Mars. Now, of course, there was a multi-minute delay between Mars and Earth, uh, but I have eliminated that delay for the sake of this video. Here we see deployment of the parachute, the release of the heat shield, and then the firing of the retro thrusters, which are required because the parachute is not enough in the thin Martian atmosphere to slow it down enough uh, to make even a bouncy landing on the surface. 4,000 feet. Radar solution, Matrix 21. 3,000 feet. Uh, the radar has a positive loss on the ground. We have a retro rocket firing solution. Retro rocket ignition on my mark. Mark. At this time, the retro that rocket has fired. We have confirmation of the retro rocket have ignited. We are now awaiting confirmation of positive signals bouncing on the ground. At this time, we are five minutes and fifty-five seconds after entry. We should be bouncing on the ground. Getting a bouncing signal. Yeah. Getting a bouncing signal. We are getting a bouncing signal. Getting confirmation of the spacecraft bouncing and alive. Mars, uh, 
Uh, however, this bouncing uh, will take place for another 10 minutes. Want to stop. Hold on. We have a momentary loss of signal as the spacecraft is bouncing on the surface. It is difficult to maintain lock. We're seeing it on the LCP. Very strong on LCP. On our LCP. We have a very strong signal in the left hand below the channel indicating that well, there. we still have a safe We're layer signal on RCP as well. Here. Both, both channels. We're on Mars, everybody. Copy that. We have CB on the bottom. We are seeing evidence of a second fragment filling. That means two and a half minutes of communications from the lander after landing. Minimum of two and a half minutes of communications after landing. We'll wait for the data to come down. It will be a few minutes, and we'll give you an update. We're, we're flight, flight, we're rolling on Mars. Of course, this is one of the all-time cutest NASA animations produced for their missions. Uh, irresistible, really. Uh, the opening of the lid after all of the rolling, the tumbling, and uh, finally the Opportunity rover unfolds itself and gets ready to make the people in Mission Control exceptionally pleased with uh, what they're about to see here. It's difficult to estimate how much popular enthusiasm for Mars exploration that came out of the Opportunity rover and still comes out of the Opportunity rover's mission uh, and of course the subsequent Curiosity mission and its partner Spirit. But here it goes, its panoramic camera unfolding and about to deliver those images back to Mission Control. And we have a report that the data is flowing. Okay, we're getting data. Waiting on those first pictures. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. There we are. What new can you see? A first look at a new world. Could you repeat that, please, imaging? Copy that. Here's our first look. Oh, wow! That is uh, the horizon. The, the images have to be stretched a little bit. Of course, after its successful arrival on Mars, Opportunity had to go on to do its thing. This is a newly released video from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory detailing its marathon run on Mars during its 11-year trek. I've edited the original 8-minute video for the sake of this video, mainly focusing on the start of each of uh, Opportunity's years. So you see here the start of 2005, its first uh, year complete. It hung around Endurance Crater and then started to uh, head down south through 2005 and 2006 and uh, continuing on its work well past the 90 days it was supposed to last for. Here it passed a thousand days and there it is at Victoria Crater and it spent quite a long time at Victoria Crater as you can see right through 2008 and then finally after 2008 it would continue heading down south for a while 
I should mention that the sound you're hearing is actually the rendering of its accelerometer reading. So the louder the sound, the bumpier the path, the softer the sound, the smoother the path. Now, uh, in 2010, it started to make a drastic turn, in this case towards Endeavor Crater, after hitting Endurance and Victoria Crater. Endeavor is that big thing on the, well, right there. And it is currently right around there. Uh, you'll see it following the ridge that is to the bottom of the map there. And that is where it has hung out for the past couple of years. And so it continues on right through 2014 and now through this year, doing its job passing 4,000 days on Mars. What I'll leave you with is a Martian sunset captured by Opportunity in 2010. This is actually, of course, a bunch of still frames stitched together and smoothed out by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But uh, there you have it, a Martian sunset captured by this plucky little rover well into its mission seven years after the launch. Okay, so thank you for watching this Today in Space History for July 7th about the Mars Exploration Rover B opportunity. Special thanks to Terminal Countdown Videos and Kurbanov for sharing NASA videos that I did not already have in my collection. And see you next time.